Yo, what is up guys? Uh, SWC just passed, watched all of it, like I've watched all of the SWCs, all, everything, but we've been getting this discussion lately. Is SWC Esports, is Summoners War Esports? And I'm gonna say it, and before you dislike this video, hear me out, SWC is an Esports. You know why? Simply because by definition it is. It is simply like the discussion is wrong and that's the point I want to make. Esports is a form of sports competition using video games. Esports often take in a form by organizers multiplayer games competitions, particularly between professional players, individuals or teams. Also, if you just check this, it is a multiplayer. It's just a competition for spectators by professional gamers. Like it's simply the moment you have a competition online and some people are getting paid, you have eSports, whether you like it or not. It's as simple as that. It doesn't even have to say that you have to have a certain skill in it or no skill. Summoners War definitely does have a bit of skill, a bunch of RNG, but the thing is RNG does not make something not an eSports. It's, it's simply like by stating like, uh, or by saying like, uh, SWC is not an eSport is saying like blue is not a color because I don't like blue That doesn't make any sense. So the discussion is wrong. The discussion should be is it enjoyable to watch any sports? Is it enjoyable to watch and that should be the real discussion because a discussion of like claiming it, Something is not because you don't like it doesn't really matter like that that doesn't make any sense so do i agree that was not enjoyable to watch for quite some of the parts yes because of the rng yes did mr chunk pretty much look sack his way through like the whole tournament yes kind of where there's like a bunch of mistakes here and there that kind of stuff for example i've seen the uh jubego video and saying like miho should not be able to solo 1v4 or 1v3 it was she should be able to if you don't draft accordingly where well, you should be drafting accordingly so there was just a mistake in drafts the same as like juno can solo a whole team if you don't draft according leona can solo a whole team you just have a few of these units if you don't counter accordingly you will be able to solo a whole team also making the bot was pretty salty on rng probably because he lost his match against seishu where he got rng pretty badly let's see what we have Yep, he got the two out of... <laughs> you see, I, I'm pretty sure he was still salty about this while casting. And therefore he hated so much on RNG. But we've seen in the last few matches, like, Chung just got, like, so many, like, RNG, like, favorable resists, procs, everything. That's also a funny thing. A lot of the community is just complaining, like, oh, violent procs are the worst. No, resistance checks are the worst. Resistance checks are by far worse than a violent proc trust me if you're playing on a high level you know this violent procs are not the worst resistance checks are the worst and those are 15 percent not 22. sure if someone like takes an additional turn every turn it's annoying yes it's really bad yes but if someone resists everything you try to put on them you're fucked even more so yeah sorry to uh, to say to you guys but it is by definition an esports we can go like it's probably a big like a gray area of like what is actually an esports it's same as like calling like hey is poker a sports because it involves skill it involves physical skill but it's kind of a gray area so what is esports well by definition simply simply don't mind all of the ads but simply the activity of playing computer games against another player on the internet often for money and watched by other people using the internet sometimes specialized organized events check everything check it's an esports let's go for the next one um competitive tournament of video games amongst professional gamers well the moment you get paid it's called professional so yes it does fit yet again um esports blah 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 yeah does it even say something about gambling yeah <laughs> well gambling we're kind of on that point so by definition it is it is but the point is which is like is it enjoyable to watch and a really good example i can give you in like regular sports what they did at some point is for baseball they changed they they got the three-pointer rule simply because it would be more enjoyable to watch for the fans 
So this is a discussion we should watch into. Is changing a fundamental part of the game, which is the highly RNG factor, would it make it more enjoyable to watch? Basketball didn't have to go for the three-pointer, but they implemented the three-pointer not to make the game more fair, actually, but in general, just to make it more enjoyable to watch. And by making it more enjoyable to watch, well, in some of it's often the case, you want a fair match. And when it's not fair, you're not going to like the match. So we had a whole bunch of like RNG. What I've seen like in general with RNG in Summoner's War, and it's been that for a really long time, I keep saying it, I don't have really hard proof. Well, it's kind of hard proof. You have your really lucky and really unlucky moments. Sometimes everything lands and your dungeon team goes 100% without any fails, and then it fails four times in a row. Also, sometimes you're reapping and you get like triple speed after quad speed after triple speed. And then the other time you throw 50 at it and you're barely passing like 50. Uh, plus 17 speed mr chung was at his moment of reaps of hitting every 25 and 26 speed it's just the way rng is set up in the game is maybe by the fundamental base not really correct because rng comes too much in like specific like it comes in a group pretty much and if you're just on your lucky moment throughout the whole tournament you're apparently winning the whole tournament so Lest kind of had that last year to be honest uh, Mr. Chung definitely had this this year so for that case yes there should be something changed in like I think that the file change in general is already a good thing sure you can still proc a lot on 12% um, while you're not procking on 27 that's definitely there but I think it's a good improvement but they should do the same thing for despair checks resistance checks and they should up those numbers to make it more specific and more uh, fair in general I think those two uh, three things would already help out a lot and they should check their fundamental base of RNG how it is like uh, distributed in, in, like in fact how does RNG work let's say you just like you have a 22% check you roll a dice of a hundred sides if it's below 22 you will get the violent proc if it's above 22 you don't get the violent proc or like vice versa it doesn't really matter the thing is what i feel like an, a random number generator you can look it up you can go down the rabbit hole rng is not random a computer cannot be a hundred percent random if i ask you take a number okay take another number it's gonna be like random based on in whatever you think of at that moment but RNG is not really random. It's based, it's pseudo random numbers as they call it. And you can read down. I don't really want to explain like all of that, but it's based on a seed. And what I've seen for some of this words that what we call like the, the um, time gates and that kind of stuff. It is like at the moment you have like a good seed that provides you like low numbers or high numbers, whatever you uh, prefer or like whatever is needed. And those numbers just keep recurring and therefore you get like sometimes you have a session of 250 scrolls with a whole like five or six uh, net fives and people have sessions of a thousand scrolls without any net five. I don't have exact proof of this. I'm just stating that I think from what I've seen in this game, from what I've seen in the, the luck moments in RNG, from what I've seen like I've been doing like RTA sessions where I have like 80% win rate and I've been doing RTA sessions where I have like 50% win rate. I'm not playing worse, I'm not playing against better players, it's mainly just the RNG. And that's just something you see over a really big sample size. So over a really big sample size, you zoom in on individual parts of that sample size, and your overall sample size is averaging still whatever your win rate is. For me, it's currently around 75% or whatnot. Yes, but if you zoom into the sample size, you have small clusters, and those small clusters are really weird you have small clusters are probably like close to 90 percent win rate because i was luck sacking and you have small clusters of probably like 50 percent win rate and that's still a span of like 30 matches so these clusters if you're at a positive cluster during a tournament like this you're just gonna get every like this value val by all means is not that great of a unit but if it procs out of every stun it is it's insanely good so for those examples also th this monkey has been procking out so many stuff like th th there's just too much stuff like you can rewatch much i'm not going to show all of the clips that happened but they just need to make it more fun to watch 
And another point in too like fun to watch, which I would say this. I think a lot of people have been kind of complaining that the um, it took too long. It was boring to watch. Well, um, I took this the times from like uh, people that uh, re-recorded the videos and put them on their own YouTube channel. So it's not really 100% accurate. But these are like the minutes. And this is the total time of the VOD, so only about so only 42% of the time spent on the whole VOD were actually matches. Also, what you can see is that a best of five, or well, this was a pretty fast best of five. This was a best of five of three matches. This was a best of five of five matches, both of these. And so a best of five of five matches takes about 30 minutes. Personally, especially because you have this luck in the game, I would like to see best of fives for everything or loses brackets or any. How do you rule out luck or how do you lower the luck factor is by increasing the sample size. By increasing the sample size, you have more matches and therefore you have less chance to just luck sack your way through. Issue with that is it would take more time, but as you see, like we have a lot of time spent on breaks, introduction videos, that kind of stuff. Sure, I do enjoy the introduction videos because I've also been like making them with like contests and that kind of stuff. But I feel like we're, the focus is too much on like the surrounding like content and breaks rather than like it should be like focusing on the matches but that's just my personal opinion so another thing i would really like to see in in rta in general is was this really a lock sack or not because the moment you are playing rta and you can see that from any streamers that's me, Topa V, Obabo, pretty much everyone has that. You don't see your own procs, you don't see your own luck. You only see like the negative luck that's like faced upon you. If you're rooting for a person to win, you do not see positive luck, you only see the negative luck. If you're rooting for a person to lose, you only see his luck, but you don't see the luck that's like the unlucky things for him. It's just how your mindset works. You only see the uh, negative things, you do not see the positive things. And therefore, I would like to see statistics at the end of the match of just saying like, okay, this person had this amount of turns with this amount of island procs. They had this amount of resistance checks with this amount of actual resists. Uh, this amount of despair chances with this amount of despair rate. I would like to see these numbers. I want to see this unit did this amount of damage. This unit did this amount of healing. This unit took this amount of turns with this amount of island procs. That kind of stuff. It would be nice for like also for casters to talk about. Because you give like a lot of more like in-depth information of like okay wow this unit actually it looked like they did really good but it actually barely did anything and the mvp of this match was clearly this unit so it just gives like more stuff to talk about and it just gives more interesting insight to the match rather than just watching the match and then you're like wow this was kind of cool so i i think it's just like if you check for example like league of legends dota that kind of thing they always pull up some statistics of not necessarily like well they actually they do with like damage dealt in like certain team fights and that kind of stuff so i think numbers for games are just always good additions to have for that reason i would like to see that and some of these matches were actually more close and not that luck as you think some of them definitely were so that is kind of the thing what you um what you just don't see like the moment you root for someone the moment you predict someone's going through you are rooting for the person and you're not seeing like the unlucky things he inflicted or like you don't see his lucky moments you only see his unlucky moments so that's kind of a thing too but all in all yeah i would say this tournament was pretty like luck favored for mr chung um also we had some drafts that were pretty questionable all in all still fun to watch i'm not like th th this might sound like pretty much a bashing video but it's also just giving feedback i've been doing this pretty much every year mostly not on my youtube channel but it, it, it just just in general by writing it this time it's mostly on my youtube channel it's maybe a bit on the sharp edge of what i feel like things are wrong but in general i want to say they have a good setup they have a good tournament that they have like um uh, they have a whole bunch of nice things they have been listening to the players like implementing like losers bracket in like prelims and all of that kind of stuff 
but I do feel like they need to step it up mostly on the luck factor because you hear a lot of like really vocal people of saying like hey this is not fun to watch it's not an esports well sorry guys by definition it is that's not the disc again that should not be the discussion if it's an esports or not it's zero percent esports no no blue is still a color like if you don't like blue blue is still a color you can have a discussion about like why you don't like blue and blue should be stupid that should be the discussion and then you can actually make a discussion and like also like have a a positive point of like okay what can we improve to blue to think of how we can make it better and just saying like oh it's not an esports it's not an esports fire or bad uh, uh, rng is bad give us exact numbers because then you can actually talk about something because now we're just kind of guessing like yes uh, for mr chung was pretty obvious he was pretty lucky and with most resist most procs but was it actually as bad as we think it is? So if someone would actually, if someone has too much time, please do this for me. Please do this for me. Go through every match, count every, like count all of the turns on both sides and count the amount of procs. And then if I have too much time, I might do it myself. But <laughs> oh man, that's such an annoying task. You would have to count every resistance check. You would have to count the amount of resistance checks uh, that were there. You have to count how many were actually resisted. You have to count every turn, how many possible violent uh, proc turns, how many uh, violent procs were actually there. And then you can actually talk about like, okay, how heavy favorable Luxek was this match or not. And I think I might do it for the finals because it's just interesting, but that will be a future video. This video is already pretty long, but I just wanted to get it out there. A, the discussion was wrong. B, the tournament was not that enjoyable for people to, to, to watch because of like RNG moments. C, I still kind of enjoyed watching it. There were like, besides having some really bad matches, it was not all bad. Like for me, the most favorable match, like I was rooting for my boy Philippity, the most fun matches, I was watching was definitely Philippity against Gaia. Sure, there were some misplays here and there. Sure, there, there were some misplays here and there. But in general, those matches were fun to watch. Like they went back and forth. Gaia won one, Philippity won one. These matches were really close, that kind of stuff. I'd like to see that. Small point on the casters. I think at some point the casters were a little bit too much bashing on RNG, which is a definitely fair point. But I think they were kind of bashing on the players at some point. Um, I think they should take like that. That could be just me, but I feel like they should take like a more like neutral standpoint in that. Also, what I noticed like for last uh, last SWC, yeah, mostly last I will see SWC last year, um, they had a more neutral point towards the draft. Currently, they what I've seen for like the casters, which I think is kind of wrong, is that they were really implementing their draft into the players. Like, for example, asking multiple times for Gemini. There's not a single person that was in this top eight that ever Jeff drafts Gemini. They probably don't have it ruined up. Why are you asking for a Gemini? That kind of stuff. Or saying like, oh, this setup is really bad. And then he like super won because it's just not a draft the casters are used to. But it's actually really good. For example, Molly, Akroma together. Like we had this match of Gaia. Yeah, for example, in this match, like the casters went like, oh, the, the draft of uh, Gaia is really bad. The draft of Gaia is insanely good. Molly or Chroma here together makes that Philippity can't land a single arm or break. The, the skill three of uh, Okeanos is probably not going to do shit. The skill two of Athena is probably not going to do shit. And the skill three of Savannah is probably not going to do shit. Because you have two units that stack glancing, non-crits, whatever, all of that BS together. So it's just it's actually a really good draft and there's no sustain on this side glancing hit. So th that's just the thing I, I would say like I think because that, that's the thing like the people that get the voice of the casters and that's also for example a, like a, in my match that I showcased in my previous video of SWC the casters made it sound like it's really bad what someone did and then everyone has the feeling that it's really bad what this player did. They have such a short time to look at a match because they have to go like on the spot really fast. The game is actually fast paced to, ca uh, to cast. It's pretty difficult to cast. See, <laughs> zero armor breaks and then double counter. And then how many stuns do we get on this? 
Oh, we do actually get the, the two out of two possible stuns. But yeah, you can't really stun that much because two units cannot be stunned. But yeah, I, I think the matches are too fast paced to actually look at something and call something bad on the spot or anything like that. So I I, I know it's pretty difficult to cast. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this topic, but I feel like they can be taking like a more neutral standpoint in like what's happening rather than just predicting their own like own play style on what should be happening. And drafting something off meta doesn't make it necessarily bad. It just makes it uh, different. And actually in tournament play, we have seen it work even without luck. So just by having like drafting in a Miho is actually pretty good. If your enemy is not on Obabu crit rate and you actually like is not on low crit rate and you actually win your whole match because of that, because he's just constantly critting and the Miho actually has potential to 1v4 in that match. All in all, Interesting tournament, really interesting tournament. Too bad it was not live. Would have liked to see it live pretty, uh, from my perspective. What I also noticed is I think too many people are a bit bashing on it. I've also been bashing on this. What I also would like to say is I think they have a really good setup. I think they have a really good game. And yes, we're all complaining, but for some reason, <laughs> what makes us complain is also makes us still sticking to the game because a lot of people are saying like ah oh, this game is so bad and like constantly complaining and there's still actually a really big uh, player base of people that are actually complaining so for some re for some reason they're doing something good because a lot of people are complaining but still play so I'm not sure what that psychological thing is, but I think if you have something to complain about, you still talk about it. So negative attention is also attention. I don't know. But in general, I would say they have like a really fun setup for the tournament itself. It's just that it's so like momentarily, like if you have one momentarily good luck session, you can get really far. That's a kind of what we've also seen with like the for example they say like oh every year we have like a really different like a really different top eight or really different like yeah mostly like world final top eight. The reason why you see most players the same ish players being in in the regional cups but not the same ish players being in the world finals is because you have losers bracket. Like to be honest, Philippity came from a losers bracket, uh, J Mac came from a losers bracket. Gaia came from a... Did Gaia come from a loser's bracket? Yes, I think so, because he didn't go straight through, or did he? Don't remember. Roset came from a loser's bracket. Who else did we have? Trokumu won straight, I think. Then we have Lest. Well, they didn't have a loser's bracket in the uh, China Cup. But as you can see, like so many of these players that are actually playing here came from a loser's bracket. Therefore, like if you would check like the original cups, a lot of people often come from like losers bracket. So I think for a game like Summoners War, a losers bracket is pretty much a must because you have that much of a luck factor in the game right now, which again I think has to be checked out because I think it's too it's too one sided for like a momentarily time. And still, again, I don't have any proof for that, but that's just how I feel. And I think a lot of people can. Back me up on that as well, because you know how your summon session goes. One time you pull like net five after net five, another time you pull like nothing for like, I don't know how many scrolls. Yeah, that, that that's just is what it is. But I think they have a really good setup. And what I'm trying to do with this feedback, maybe a little bit of passion, maybe a little bit of like whatever saying my opinion. It's mostly what I do, just say my opinion. It's try to make it better because I think they have a really good like setup. And I've watched every SWC. I do enjoy watching it. But at some point I was just like, oh, there he goes again. Yes, oh, oh, he's definitely gonna proc out of this. Oh yeah, he does. Oh, he's for sure gonna resist. Yes, he did. So that's at some point how I was watching the SWC. And the moment you start watching it with that a negative like attitude, that's what I noticed for myself and also the people I was watching with. We were just literally watching it with like a negative attitude. So yeah, and that's not a good thing. And then you get like a lot of like, hate comments and that kind of stuff on it so for me i would like to see them improve for next year by just improving some fundamental things in their game which is a showing exact numbers of turns violent procs resistance checks and that kind of stuff because 
there's so many matches that also for me also for myself but also like if a guild member shares like a match like oh this was such a luck sack i'm like and then i watch it and it's like three against three procs sure someone had more key procs than someone else that is still a thing but in the end it was still a three against three procs it was not like a complete luck sack it was not 10 against one like if it's 10 against one easy luck sack hands down luck sack if he resists like th uh, three out of four strips easy luck sack that kind of stuff so yeah i would like to see actual like luck numbers and from there you can dictate like hey was this match actually a luck sack or not and i would like to check them into like your your luck sack cluster i would say so those are the, the, the pretty much the key points i think this game needs to improve and let me know in the comments what you think about it like i hope you made it all the way through the end of the video probably a lot of people are like for the moment that i said like the summoners bar as we see is an esports people already like maybe dropped off so let me know in the comments a if you finish this video and b what you think about it because i think this is more like a constructive feedback than some other like posts i've seen and some other like uh, videos i've seen that are just like ah oh, bashing like summoners bar is not an esports because it was shit and or it was not fun to watch but it's like okay what is the next step like you the, the the thing i think and that goes for everything in life you can call something shit but you also have to call then something how to improve it like just bashing something is not gonna help anyone you bash something but you also tell how they can make it better and then it's actually constructive feedback or something what they know and trying not to be too much bashing but I would like to see things improve. I really like the game. I played three SWCs, two of them. I can watch them back. I can show them in videos. Two of them were heavy luck sacks uh, for my, uh, uh, or like pretty heavy luck sacks from the enemy side of how I lost them. One was a pretty close match, but not that much of a luck sack, but still lost that one. So I would like to see the things differently. Um, so that's it mainly for this video hope you enjoyed it so again in the comments let me know if you agree with me or not feel free to completely disagree also let me know what you think about uh my points which i would like to see implemented or if you even have like other points and again if someone wants to go through every match and just count like the amount of turns and fire procs and that kind of stuff and would like to send it to me i'm more than happy to make a video about that and of course i will be crediting you in there so Thanks for watching guys, the video is way too long and see you in the next one.